Hey, I'm Steve, and I'm in big trouble. I recently found proof that my dad is a real-life cannibal. I'm not joking here. And I'm not sure if I should contact the police or FBI, but I know I have to do something, because my dad needs to be stopped. I should have realized that he was weird when I was a kid. My dad always told me stories about a cannibal tribe in the Brazilian Amazonas. He told those stories with so much detail as if he had experienced it himself. He said they normally only ate deceased people, but sometimes when they thought someone was a sorcerer or a witch, they would make an exception and eat that person alive. To make things worse, he told me they mostly accused little girls of being witches. He also said that those indigenous Brazilian tribes would go out and try to capture men of other tribes and then do a big feast eating them. Listening to his stories as a kid was scary. But I was young, and I kind of thought my dad's obsession with cannibalism was normal. He also has a bunch of human skulls all over our house. And when I asked him where he got those from, he said he bought them on eBay. But I highly doubt that that's true. Because four years ago, he changed careers. He went from being a school teacher to becoming a crematorium operator. His new job is all about turning dead corpses into ashes. And it's his duty to treat those bodies with respect. But I suspect that he is taking those bodies apart and secretly eating them. The other weird thing he does is fly to Brazil once a year. My mom told me he has family over there and I believed her as a kid. But why had I never seen my Brazilian family? And why had I never been invited to visit them? Well, one day I found out the truth. I went through my dad's wardrobe and at the bottom I found a hidden box. When I opened it, I saw several sets of human teeth. It was so creepy. And there was one photo showing my dad wearing those teeth around his head, surrounded by some indigenous jungle people. Another photo showed my dad holding a spear in his hand next to some indigenous warriors. It looked like they were about to go hunting. I just hope it wasn't for some other humans. But now I knew where my dad went once a year. He visited the Brazilian Amazon to hang out with some cannibalistic, warmongering tribe members. And maybe he went on hunting other humans with them so they could eat them afterward. I hope this was all a big joke, but when I confronted my dad and asked if he had ever eaten human flesh, his response was so creepy. A big grin appeared on his face, and then he asked me, How do you know, son? At first, I didn't know how to respond. But once I had gathered myself, I said, You are a disgusting and evil psychopath. But he responded, No, no, it's not evil and it's not disgusting. I mean, what's the difference between eating pig, beef, or human? There is no difference. And if a human dies of a natural cause, then it's not evil to eat the corpse. Because a dead person doesn't care. So that's why you became a crematory operator? So you could have free lunch at work? I asked him. Ugh, those are old and sick people. That would be disgusting. No, I'm just fascinated by dead bodies. It's really no big deal, he responded. Wow, my dad thinks that being a cannibal is no biggie. I'm honestly scared of him, because I don't know what he is capable of. If he is willing to spend thousands of dollars each year to fly to Brazil just to eat other humans, then he might also be willing to eat my mom or me. And one time, he asked me if I wanted to come with him to Brazil. He said it would be a great adventure, and I could finally develop a taste for, you know what. He said it's better than anything else he had ever tasted. But why does my dad think that I am even slightly interested in cannibalism? This whole thing is so disturbing. I am seriously considering calling the FBI, but I don't want my dad to go to prison because then my mom would be very lonely. To make things worse, my dad recently bought a huge barbecue grill. I am suspecting the worst, but so far, he has only used it when I wasn't at home, so I have no idea what he's eating on it. To be honest, if someone wants to eat my corpse after I'm dead, I wouldn't mind. And I recently read on the internet that more and more moms eat their own placentas after giving birth. It's so disgusting, but it's one of the hottest trends out there. And even Kim Kardashian says she has eaten her own placenta after giving birth. I guess, as long as you don't hurt others, you can eat whatever you want. Unfortunately, I don't think my dad is following that rule. I assume that he goes to Brazil once a year to hunt for fresh human meat.
and two weeks ago he cooked us a nice soup with pork meat inside. Or so I thought, because two days later he asked me how I liked the soup, and when I told him that it tasted good, I saw this creepy little smirk on his face, which means that I might have already eaten another human without knowing it. Please let me know in the comments what you would do in my situation. Shall I forget about my dad being a cannibal, or shall I contact the FBI? I mean, my dad is currently working as a crematory operator, which means that he might be eating your dead grandpa right now. Would you mind him doing that? Thank you for listening to my story, and please subscribe to this channel for more animated stories. Hey, my name is Miranda. And I want to tell you why I got plastic surgery and whether it helped me win over my dream guy Jordan or not. It all started when I was a teenager. My Latina mom always told me I looked ugly because I didn't have a big butt or big breasts. She said I couldn't compete with the other girls unless I got plastic surgery. Well, it was easy for her to criticize me because she was born very curvy, and even in her 50s, guys couldn't stop staring at her. Her words made me feel very insecure about my looks. But she was right. The guys at my high school weren't really interested in me. Especially my crush Jordan was completely ignoring me. He was without a doubt the most handsome and popular guy in our school. And I always wondered if he'd be interested in dating me if I got bigger butt and bigger breasts. Well, for my 18th birthday, my mom gifted me a butt implant surgery. The operation was brutal, but wow, after the operation, when I saw my ass, I was shocked. It was so much bigger than I had expected. And when my mom saw it, she started jumping up and down, screaming and cheering. And for the first time in my life, she told me I looked good. I didn't want to hide my ass from the world, so the first thing I did was upload a picture of my ass onto Instagram. Of course, my friends were all shocked and wrote, What the hell happened? I hoped they would be supportive, but when we met up, they all made fun of me and said I would do anything to get attention from guys. It hurt to hear them say that, and since then we haven't talked to each other. I realized that if my friends didn't support my decision, then they weren't my real friends to begin with. I continued to upload photos of my butt, and in just over three months, I gained 10,000 Instagram followers. My mom told me I could become famous and that I needed my breast done next. She even paid for it again. After my breast enlargement surgery, every guy stared at me, no matter where I went. I probably looked a bit over the top, to be honest. But luckily, I live near Hollywood where many women have breast and butt operations, so I don't stand out too much. And finally, I felt attractive enough to contact my longtime crush Jordan on Instagram. He responded to me immediately, and after a few days of chatting, we had our first date. At first, he couldn't believe we had gone to the same high school. He said he had never noticed me, so I had to tell him about my butt and breast surgery. Luckily, he didn't mind. He accepted me for who I was, and we officially started dating. However, it was the worst relationship you could ever imagine. He treated me like an object, and talked to all his friends about my butt and my body even when I was right next to him. Knowing that he was only with me for my body made me feel extremely insecure about myself. I was always scared he would leave me as soon as he found a better looking girl, but at least I had many guys interested in me anyway. So I simply broke up with him and started dating another guy that had DM'd me over Instagram. He was a well-known DJ here in Los Angeles, and he treated me with much more respect. But then, after two weeks, I caught him cheating on me with another girl, so I ended up breaking up with him too. It felt like guys only wanted me for a quick fling and then dumped me. They had no interest in a real, long-term relationship with me. That's why I stopped dating guys I found on Instagram. Instead, I signed up for college, with the hopes of finding a decent guy there. I'm studying marketing, and currently I'm going on dates with two different guys. I've learned from my past mistakes, and now I'm taking things slow. I first want to get to know the guys before I jump right in. I also already know that I'll become a real estate agent, because I think my butt and breasts will make me stand out and help me sell properties. So please understand that getting plastic surgery won't magically fix all your problems. I thought I wanted to date the most attractive guy I could find, but now I know that what I really want is to simply be in a relationship with a good guy that I can trust, and who loves me for who I am, not for the way I look. But at least it increased my confidence, 
because now I feel comfortable in my own skin. Even though the butt implants are seriously uncomfortable, they feel like I'm sitting on two baseballs all day long. There's no way I'd ever be able to get a job where I have to sit on a chair all day. It'd be a nightmare. Just a heads up, I suggest thinking twice before getting plastic surgery. Thank you for listening to my story, and please, subscribe to this channel.